Now that Workbench has found the markers for us, I'm going to use those to actually take us straight to the point of the problem. And then I'm going to show you how you can use an additional plugin called Transum in Wireshark to very quickly show you what the problem actually is. So before I do that, I wanted to just have a look at the problems. We can see that the marker has occurred in this file here, 15, number 15. So let's quickly open that file up in Wireshark. We can use the statistics function in Wireshark to show us some interesting information about the contents of this actual trace file. So we can see here a combination of the rate of packets per second and also the rate of TCP errors. Now I'm going to just mask out the packet count so that we just see the rate of TCP errors. And we can see that actually we have a worrying area just here and in fact throughout the trace we have a reasonably high level of TCP errors. Now in a traditional type of analysis you might draw the conclusion that the problem that's affecting the user and causing the slow response times is a problem of excessive TCP errors. But I'll show you that you can't rely on this type of information to accurately tell you that that's what's causing the problem. And there's a better way of doing it. So let's just close this quickly. So we're back here and I'm going to look at this second instance, this second marker. So let's right click. It's, it's opening the same file actually, but it will jump straight to the point where the uh, marker has been sent. So here we see the marker. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm only interested in traffic that's associated with the PC that the user was using. And as that user actually sent the marker, I can use the source address here and apply that as a filter. So that filters down the trace so that all I'm seeing is the information for that particular user. Now I said that we were going to use Transum to do the further analysis and you, you can see that I have Transum installed in this copy of Wireshark. So I'm just going to shrink that and expand this and you can see here all of the Transum generated information. But what I also have is I have a profile set up to add transum information into the summary line. What you'll see is we'll get additional columns in the summary line. Now we get these columns, APDU, response time, service time, request spread and response spread. And also what I can do is I can add to the filter. So I just type in transum in the filter and apply that filter. I still see the marker, here's our marker, but I, what I can also see is the previous, the response time for the previous transactions and obviously this one here is the one that would concern us. Now we can see that the APDU response time is 29.7 seconds and the service time, that being the time it took the server to actually process the request, is also a similar value and the spread values are very small. So I'm not going to go into explaining the meaning of these. You can go off and look at the Transum user guide and it explains this in a great deal of detail. But what this means is that this problem is not a network problem. It's not a problem with the transmission of either the request or the response. The problem is purely a service problem. So we could then focus our investigation on the web server and it's supporting services such as d databases and file servers, etc.